Good afternoon and welcome to the 2023 Convocation Ceremony for the University of Maryland School of Social Work. As we prepare for our celebration, we ask that you please silence your cell phones at this time.
And now, please rise as we begin our processional with the Dean of the University of Maryland School of Social Work, Dr. Judy Postmas, joined by Congressman Jamie Raskin, along with representatives of the school's Board of Advisors, Alumni Association Board, and members of the Platform Party. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the University of Maryland School of Social Work faculty. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2023 PhD graduating class was led by the doctoral program director, Dr. Bethany Lee. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the 2023 Master of Social Work graduating class. And now, please welcome Clinical.
afternoon, you have just witnessed over 230 of our graduates process down here to their seats for the School of Social Work in this country. And the time is right for social work and for you. Graduates and everyone, please take your seats. So welcome. My name is Dr. Uh, Dr. Judy Postmas. I'm the Dean here at the School of Social Work. Thank you. And I want to welcome our esteemed graduates, honored guests, parents and grandparents, friends, spouses, partners, children, faculty and staff of the School of Social Work and our honorees. It is my deep pleasure to welcome you all here today to be part of the cel celebration of the school's 62nd year and our annual School of Social Work MSW graduation. So I want to begin, I have a few acknowledgments um, and then we'll get to our guest speaker. Um, I would like to begin by acknowledging the land on which we currently sit. We operate on the ancestral lands of Iroquoian speaking Susquehannock peoples and Alequin speaking peoples of the Cedarville Band of the Piscataway Conoy, the Piscataway Indian Nation and the Piscataway Conor tribe, all of whom share this area through their relations and whose descendants are thriving and resisting settler occupation. May we each be committed to addressing injustice against others, be it based on race, ethnicity, national orientation, national, or national origin, religion, sexual identity, gender, and other culturally oppressed groups. Today, thank you. Is the heat on? Oh, so okay. So today we are graciously joined by some special colleagues. So first, I want to point out Miss Regina Sally, who's here. If you would please stand, she's the vice president of our alumni association. I'm sure Regina and other alumni will be in touch with you soon as you transition from student to alumni. Thank you, Regina, for being here. Also on stage today includes our esteemed and phenomenal faculty, along with our newly graduated PhD students, whom you'll get to meet a little later today. Our faculty continues to make important contributions in the, to the field of social work and to set standards for academic and professional excellence. I would like all of our faculty members to stand and be recognized. And on a special note, I just learned this morning, Dr. Jeff Greif, if you wouldn't mind standing. I was just uh, informed this morning by President Bruce Cheryl that Dr. Greif is being honored as a, as a un distinguished university professor. I would also like to thank our assistant and associate deans and staff because they are the backbone of the school and they support us in our work. Thank you for all that you do for our students, our faculty, and our community. Please stand and be recognized. I also want to give a huge shout out to those who served on the Convocation Planning Committee. The students and staff did an outstanding job organizing this event and making this a special day for everyone. Please stand and be recognized if you served on that committee. I also want to recognize graduates who are graduating from some of our special programs like the Title IV-E Education for Public Child Welfare, the BYS Fellowships, and the RA Scholars. If you participated in any of these programs, please stand so we can congratulate you. I also want to draw attention to what I'm wearing today. The description of what we are wearing as we call regalia and why we wear it can be found in the back of the program. My robe is purple to represent the school where I graduated with my PhD, which is SUNY Albany. 
and my hood represents those colors from the same school. You might wonder or not why I'm wearing these cords around my, my neck. Um, these cords represent my professional and personal identities. This dark purple one represents the research I do in domestic violence. This cord, some of you, I know some students are wearing this cord, represents my identity as a first generation student. And this cord represents my, my, um, part, my, <laughs> hello. <laughs> this cord represents my involvement and participation in part of the LGBTQ plus A. You might also notice that there's a, there's a high chair, yellow chair over there um, on that side of the stage. Not that long ago I had back surgery and so standing for long periods of time can be a little challenging for me. So when I greet all of you and after you walk up here to be honored, I will be sitting on that chair and you all can stand next to me to have your picture taken. <laughs> so graduates, I'm proud of you today as you join our social work profession. You've shown resilience and perseverance and just a general stick to itness as you started this program and finished today. Some of you started during the pandemic and learned quickly how to be flexible and pivot at a moment's notice. You will need all of these skills as you enter our great profession. My congratulations go out to all of you today and to your supporters who were here to celebrate you. Your moms, dads, grandparents, other family members, your partners, your friends, they all deserve to be recognized for that support. So for that, graduates, please stand and thank them. So now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you our keynote speaker for today, Representative Jamie Raskin. Congressman Jamie Raskin proudly represents Maryland's 8th Congressional District in the U.S. House of Representatives. The district includes most of Montgomery County and a small part of Prince George's County. Congressman Raskin was sworn into his fourth term at the start of the 118th Congress in Janu on January 6, 2023. That day should be an infamy, we remember that date. Re Representative Raskin was chosen by the Democratic Caucus to be the ranking member of the House Committee on Oversight and Accountability in the 118th Congress. This is his fourth term serving on this oversight committee. <laughs> Previously, Representative Raskin served three terms on the House Judiciary Committee and the House on the Committee on House Administration. He served two terms on the Rules Committee and the Coronavirus Select Subcommittee, and during the 117th Congress, he served as Chair of the Oversight Subcommittee on Civil Rights and Civil Liberties, and Chair of the Rules Subcommittee on Expedited Procedure. So when faculty complain about the number of committees they serve on, remember this. Um, so, uh, Rep Representative Raskin was the lead impeachment manager in the second impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump. <laughs> and he served on the select committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. Prior to his time in Congress, Raskin was a three-term state senator in Maryland, where he also served as a Senate Majority Whip. He earned a reputation for building coalitions in Annapolis to deliver a series of landmark legislative accomplishments, including marriage equality, <laughs> abolition of the death penalty, <laughs> passage of the first benefit corporation law in America, and the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact. He was also a professor of constitutional law at American University in Washington for more than 25 years. He has authored several books, including the Washington Post bestseller, Overruling Democracy, The Supreme Court versus the American People, and the highly acclaimed We the Students, Supreme Court Cases for and About America's Students. And finally, this latest book, 
on the New York Times number one bestseller, Unthinkable Trauma, Truth, and the Trials of American Democracy. So Congressman Raskin is a graduate of Harvard College and Harvard Law School and is a former editor of the Harvard Law Review. And I'm so grateful to the Convocation Planning Committee who recommended that we ask Congressman Raskin to be our, our guest speaker. So without further introduction, please welcome Representative Jamie Raskin. Well, thank you, Dean Postmas, and um, uh, to you, Dean Postmas, and distinguished faculty members, to the moms and dads out there, the grandparents, the uncles and aunts, and cousins and friends and siblings, uh, to the 2023 graduating class of the University of Maryland School of Social Work, and to the uh, Convocation Committee that invited me especially. Uh, it's an honor to address one of the nation's great schools of social work. You have an illustrious and storied past here, and every time I hear your name, it makes me proud of our state. Graduates, you enter an extraordinary profession. It has been central to the development of the major civilizing movements and social reforms of the last century in our country. And the history of social work has been profoundly intertwined with the history of feminism and women's political participation in our country. Our first female cabinet member, the great Frances Perkins, who served in President Franklin D. Roosevelt's cabinet, was a social worker. She played an instrumental role in the creation of social security and the passage of the federal minimum wage law. And she placed the ethic of social solidarity and mutual support at the center of the New Deal. The first woman ever elected to Congress, Jeanette Rankin from Montana in 1916, was a social worker and a Republican. She was a passionate campaigner for a woman's suffrage. And after being elected to Congress from a state that enfranchised women early, she fought for the 19th Amendment for all women to get the right to vote. And that was ratified four years after she went into the House. She was a crusader for social reform, for voting rights and election reform, and a passionate anti-war activist who voted against US participation in the First World War. Barbara Mikulski, the first woman ever elected to the United States Senate in Maryland, a Democrat and the longest serving senator in our state's history, was and still is a committed social worker. And she, of course, went to this great school. Um, <laughs> And Senator Mikulski talks about it all the time as a formative influence in both her professional life and her political life. And for her, public office, she said, was just social work with power. And she never abandoned the sense of social mission and public purpose that she learned right here with this amazing faculty. So I know that you launched your careers with a spirit of great pride in the past and deep affection for this remarkable institution. But I also don't need to tell you that we're sending you off to do nearly impossible work under conditions of sharp political polarization and dramatic economic inequality, and that you will almost certainly be underpaid for your indispensable and excellent and intricate service to our communities. And yet, and yet I cannot think of anyone in America in a better position to help our society and shape a positive American future than the members of your graduating class. And because I am allotted uh, just 10 minutes here and have foolishly already used three of them telling you things you already know, uh, I want to give you seven reasons before I leave you for you to be feeling tremendous optimism about your work and hope for the American future. So it's seven reasons in seven minutes, one reason for hope enclosed in each remaining minute I have. And the first reason I bring you is from my own political career. And when I first got into politics, I ran for the Maryland State Senate against a 32-year incumbent 
who was president pro tem of the Senate and the boss of our local political machine in Montgomery County. And when I announced the Montgomery Journal, our local paper, quoted a pundit who said, Raskin's chances of victory are considered impossible. And nine months later, we got 67% of the vote, and the Washington Post had an article quoting a pundit who said, Raskin's victory was inevitable. So <laughs> we went from impossible to inevitable in nine months because the pundits are never wrong, but I like to tell young people that in politics, nothing is impossible and nothing is inevitable, but it's only just possible through education and organizing and mobilizing people for change. And anything that seems inevitable was once considered impossible. So you in your careers, by your creativity and your college, your compassion, and your education will regularly make the impossible inevitable in the lives of other citizens and other families. And that's the first reason I want you to be optimistic today. And the second also comes from that same campaign of mine back in 2006. And when I did my kickoff speech in sub-freezing weather in January, I laid out all the impossible things that I wanted to do in Annapolis. And Dean Postmas, uh, mentioned some of them, like passing marriage equality and abolishing the death penalty and ban banning uh, military-style assault weapons in our state and adopting a national popular vote and enacting medical marijuana for sick people. And after I gave my speech, a woman came up to me and she said, Jamie, Jamie, great speech. I loved your speech. But one thing she said, take out everything you've got in that speech about gay marriage, because it's not going to happen, it's never going to happen, and it makes you sound like you're really extreme, like you're not in the political center. And I had to swallow hard because I didn't have man that many um, attendees with me that day when I kicked off, and I didn't want to offend her. But my three kids were right there watching, and I remember so much my 11-year-old son Tommy being there and looking right at me to see how I was going to respond. And so I said, Thank you very much for telling me that, because it makes me realize that it's not my ambition to be in the political center. It's my ambition to be in the moral center. And that's why I call myself, that's why I call myself a progressive. The heart of that word is progress. And we can make progress towards morality. Our job in politics is to find the moral center the best that we can and bring the political center to us. And the reason I'm telling you that story is because Maryland ended up doing all those things, not because of me, but because of everybody who was in office doing all those things that inspired me to run for office in the first place. Um, we made the impossible inevitable by operating from the moral center, not the political center. And you too can do that every single day in your work. I have seen politics, and I have seen government, and I've seen public policy, and I have seen social administration work here in the state of Maryland, and you are the next generation that's gonna make it work. The third reason I offer you comes from a two-minute conversation that I had with Paul Rusesa Baginia, who is the manager of the Hotel de Mille Collines in Rwanda, and the subject of the movie Hotel Rwanda, about the Hutu, Hutu genocide against the Tutsi minority in Rwanda back in 1994. And when the Hutu military unleashed a brutal campaign of ethnic cleansing against the Tutsis, uh, Mr. Rusesa Baginya, who is Hutu, allowed more than 1,000 Tutsi refugees to secretly take shelter in his hotel, saving their lives. And when I saw him speak about it more than a decade la later, I had the chance to ask him a question. And I asked him this simple question. I said, you risked your life and everything you had to save other people's lives. What made you so different from the people who were unwilling to act? And he gave me this most amazing answer. He said, a lot of people walk around with guilt and shame about something they may have done in the past. And that makes them feel that they cannot act to do good in the present. It paralyzes them. 
But I realized, although I had done some things I was not proud of in my life, that I could still act to help a lot of other people now. You do not have to be perfect to do good in the world. And so that's a reason for great hope, which you can carry with you in the world. You do not have to be perfect to do good and to be good. My friend Kate Bennis tells me that this will be key to your success as a social worker. You may have been in bad trouble, like Malcolm X was before he went to prison, but you can make good trouble later on, as my late colleague and friend John Lewis called it. You can always go from bad trouble to good trouble in your life. My fourth reason for hope is that most of the common negative messages we receive about human nature are just propaganda and disinformation. And the vast majority of human beings on Earth do good the vast majority of the time. And I can't prove this to you in one minute, but there's a great book that I recommend to you by Rutger Bregman called Humankind, which can prove it to you. And by the way, this would make a great graduation gift for anybody still trying to find one. Um, it's called Humankind. But in the book, Bregman debunks almost all of the key negative messages we carry around in our heads about the depravity of our species. You know, William Golding won a Nobel Prize in literature because of his novel, Lord of the Flies, which has sold tens of millions of copies and which we all read and were traumatized by in middle school. But as Bregman explains it, the Lord of the Flies is completely demolished as a thesis about human nature by the evidence of a real world shipwreck of Australian schoolboys in 1965 who found themselves stranded on a desert island and they created a peaceful functioning democratic community with fairness and rules and absolute decency. And the boys formed bonds of lifelong friendship and became men of real character and conscience. Meantime, the author of The Lord of the Flies, William Golding, was a depressed misanthrope who as a teacher once divided his students up into gangs and urged them to fight one another. I've always understood the Nazis, Golding once said in an interview, because I am of that sort by nature. The Lord of the Flies is not a reflection in the mirror of human nature, but a reflection in the mirror of its author. Bregman similarly demolishes the other major cultural proofs of human depravity we carry around in our minds, like the Milgram experiments undertaken in the early 1960s at Yale by a social psychology professor who purported to show that people were willing to administer painful shocks to experimental subjects if they were told to do that by someone in authority. Well, Bregman shows the totally dubious methodology of the study, and he debunks all of it as something verging on a fraud. The point is that so much of what we've internalized about the alleged evil of our own species is just wrong and false. The evidence is that while undoubtedly there have been a lot of fanatical and pathological leaders who come to power, Vladimir Putin is one who comes to mind from abroad, um, most people end up rejecting these leaders as tyrants and monsters. And your job is to help translate the ordinary moral sentiments and intuitions of the vast majority of the people into effective public action, reform, and change. My fifth, my fifth reason for you um, is that whenever things look grim, if you feel surrounded one day by corruption and insurrection and inequality and indifference, remember that we stand on the shoulders of giants who overcame far greater odds than we face even today. Frederick Douglass was born enslaved, not even an hour away from here, at the Y River Plantation on the Eastern Shore. He escaped from the violence and oppression of slavery to become America's leading abolitionist and freedom fighter and a major national leader through Civil War and the Reconstruction. Harriet Tubman was also born into slavery in Maryland and became a leading abolitionist and freedom fighter who rescued and liberated at least 70 enslaved people on the Eastern Shore. And Frederick Douglass said, if there is no struggle, there's no progress. The struggle may be moral, 
or physical or moral and physical, but there must be struggle. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never has and it never will. A message to you from a fellow Marylander in the 19th century. And if Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman can conquer slavery with the Supreme Court against them and the U.S. Senate against them and the entire scientific establishment against them, we can conquer climate change in our time with the entire scientific establishment on our side. We can make that happen. And it might not feel like it sometimes, but you can look to another great hero of the American Revolution, Tom Paine, who said, these are the times that try men and women's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will shrink at this moment from the service of their cause and their country, but everyone that stands with us now will win the love and the favor and the affection of every man and every woman for all time. Tyranny like hell is not easily conquered, but we have this saving consolation. The more difficult the struggle, the more glorious in the end will be our victory. A message to you from the 18th century from Tom Paine. Um, so, my sixth reason is this. Um, so many people belonging to the new generations of Americans, uh, generations millennial and Y and Z, and I can't keep them all straight because I'm sinking deep into middle age here, but um, all, all of the young people that I know are way beyond the racism, the sexism, the homophobia, the immigrant bashing. They're also a little bit beyond grammar too, but that's a different problem. Um, but they have succeeded beyond the false idols of the past. The young are committed to addressing the climate crisis and overcoming racism, and they are serious about defending freedom and expanding equality in our country. Our future is a pro-democracy, pro-freedom, pro-human rights future. And you can see it in the young people of America. And there's a reason that reactionary forces in America are trying to shut down college student voting and to disenfranchise the young population. But it will be impossible to do that. You cannot disenfranchise entire generations. The real threat to their empowerment is the crisis in mental and emotional health. And so, if we can keep their spirits up, if we can safeguard their health and teach them how to organize, then democracy will prevail in this new century. And finally, my seventh and final reason for you comes from my dad, Marcus Raskin, who was a political philosopher. And he used to say to the kids in my family, when everything looks hopeless, you are the hope. You are the hope. And yeah, I know that this is a lot of pressure and even guilt to impose on you on your graduation day. But when I look out at this magnificent and startlingly young class of 2023, of graduating students. Uh, what, what just happened there? <laughs> um, all I can see in your faces is hope. Great hope for our future and in our future. You are the hope indeed and you will be the hope for the countless people you come to serve over the course of your career. So there are my seven reasons for hope for you. I could actually give you hundreds more, but like all commencement speakers, I've run out of time. And the rest is up to you. So Godspeed and may fortune love you. Congressman Raskin, we are so privileged that you took time out of your busy schedule to be here. We have a plaque that, that gives our appreciation for your words of wisdom to the University of Maryland School of Social Work graduating class of 2023. Thank you so much. And of course you have to have University of Maryland bling. 
No, Ross. <laughs> Enjoy. Unfortunately, Congressman Raskin has to leave because, oh, he has this thing called the debt ceiling he has to deal with? I don't know. <laughs> thank you so much for being thank here. You. Appreciate thank it. you. So I want to just say a few words and then we're going to get on with the, the awards and the graduation process. So I want to reflect on my own MSW graduation and career and I want to leave you all with five pieces of advice, not seven, five. One, be open to new opportunities and adventures along the way. Within three months of graduating with my MSW, I was implementing new programs in my agency I was working in and supervising other social workers. I served as a social worker, an associate director, and executive director of a domestic violence program and a state planner. My academic career started at SUNY Albany and then went to the University of Kansas and then Rutgers University and now here at UMB. And I never, ever in my entire career dreamed that I would be a dean someday when I graduated with my MSW back in 1990, um, especially as a first generation daughter of immigrant parents who was also a lesbian. So I'm very grateful to be here. So be open. Be open and seek opportunities throughout your career. Second, never stop learning. Society is constantly changing and so should you. It feels like we've been trying to walk on shifting sands these last few years. Learn from your mistakes. Learn from each other. Look for opportunities to expand who you are and the work you do. Nothing is constant. And remember, we offer lots of continuing professional education workshops at our school, so <laughs> come get your education there. Three, practice self-care, practice self-care, practice self-care. Don't think I need to say anything more about that. <laughs> Four, pay attention to aligning your values with your mission and your work. Remember why you became a social worker in the first place. Why you chose to get an MSW degree. Don't hide from your mistakes and make sure you find great supervisors and mentors along the way to keep you focused. And finally, find your tribe. Find your network of other social workers that you can laugh and cry with. These are the people who understand the work that you do and why you do it and support you along the way. They may be family members, but more likely they will be other social workers, including some of your classmates here today. So embrace them, meet with them often, in person and virtually, cry with them, celebrate with them, and keep them close. The time is right for social work, and the time is right for you. Now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Don Schaefer, Associate Dean of Student Affairs, who will introduce the student speaker. Hi. Um, so I don't have remarks prepared, but I'm very excited to introduce Omari Rakazi, who will be delivering your keynote for your students. So let's welcome her. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Schaefer. Good afternoon, class of 2023. We made it. Yes, we did. Welcome, Dean Postmas, faculty, staff, esteemed family and friends here and those watching out there. Thank you, Congressman Raskin, for your time and your wisdom. We are honored to have you here. I'd like to start off by giving a special recognition and a thank you to our support systems. This includes our family, our friends, our peers, our professors, and let's not forget our administrators and staff who often work behind the scenes to get things from point A to point B. This support system was the one who always offered a warm hug, a genuine check-in, a much needed extension on that paper that we all probably used, <laughs> 
and responded to our last minute requests. Thank you. Thank you. I also personally would like to give two special shout outs. First, to my family in the audience that for always sticking together through a lot of thick and thins and for their unconditional love and support always. I thank you and I love you. Second, to Dean Taylor, Miss Washington, and every single person who supported the efforts to make this day special for us. It is one thing to do something because it is your job, but it is a whole nother thing when you do it out of pure love for the students. It is important to give credit where credit is due. Thank you. Oh, my stars, now I'm gonna start, so I stay with time. All right, to my social workers. There's an African proverb that states, it takes a village to raise one child. A very powerful statement that rings true in every aspect of our social work profession. From the micro to the macro, we work with individuals from a person and environment perspective. That environment being their village. This year's social work theme for NASW is around social work breaks barriers. So, how do we break those barriers? By becoming the village. As we step into our profession, let's do so with respectful intention so that we may lead by example in breaking barriers for our clients and our communities. Things will get rough, things will get tough, but that's the nature of our work. So don't forget to take care of you. Reach out to your professional cohort when assistance is needed. Go get a massage. Go on a mindfulness retreat. And when in doubt, go dancing and release all those feel-good chemicals in your body. Trust me, you won't regret it. And when you do go, call me, because I'll go. I'll go. <sighs> OK. On the last day of my integrated behavioral health policy class, that was a mouthful, the professor gave us advice that boiled down to four words. Educate, advocate, empower, and repeat. She didn't elaborate beyond those four words in order for us to be able to create our meaning. So, as we move forward, let's educate through maintaining awareness of most up-to-date research, interventions, and our policies, all of which imp directly impact all aspects of what we do. Advocate for those who cannot advocate for themselves, don't know how to, or don't even know that they're allowed to. Empower your clients and communities through education and support so that they can learn to stand up for, on their own feet or stand up for themselves and that we can finally work ourselves out of a job and go on retreats because that's what I want to do. <laughs> and lastly, repeat the process. So educate, advocate, empower, and repeat. Now, I respectfully would like to add three more to the list. Number one, build trust through self-accountability. Build trust with yourself first and practice self-accountability towards others. Building trust takes time. Just like Rome wasn't built in a day, trust works exactly the same way. If you really want to get a good breakdown and anatomy on trust, after this, YouTube Brene Brown's acronym on braving. Let me spell it. That's B like boy, R-A-V-I-N-G. It perfectly captures the essence of trust. Number two, never back down on the first no you get. Always follow up with a gentle and loving, why not? Sometimes a system that's on autopilot could use a little why not. For as long as your why not stems from an intention outside of yourself and your circle, and benefits those that you may never meet, it is worth the push. And lastly, number three, always give credit where credit is due. We will take on many roles, some of which will include leadership. Don't forget about the support system that got you there and keeps you there. Our paths will differ and we will not always see eye to eye, and that's a good thing. For we all come from different walks of life and lived experiences. My background is in international business. 
So I will do, I will, so I will make, so I will find my way to make this work for me, just as I hope you will find your way to make this work for you. And together, from each corners our, of our own little village, we can find our way into the intersecting path of intersectionality, hashtag Kimberly Crenshaw, <laughs> and build a bridge that serves and supports the people we meet. We are a very diverse group of people with different stories and challenging circumstances. Just imagine the impact we can have if we really decide to break those barriers. For instance, we can hold a direct seat at the table in most, if not all, environments, which includes politics. So run for office if your heart is strong enough. Senator Barbara Mikulski did, as Congressman Raskin said, a social worker from this school. Get involved in research and strengthen the social work platform and visibility. And last but not least, don't forget to reach across the aisle. Yes, the political aisle. Open a platform for respectful discourse and engage in listening with intention so that we may hopefully narrow the current and unfortunate gap that exists. In closing, let's become the village, not just for each other, but for all those we intend to serve and support. Take what's been offered to you through the privilege of this education and spread yourself across all the different sectors of our state and our nation. There's a quote by someone that says, be the change you want to see in the world. Let's tweak that into become the village you want to live in to leave behind for generations to come. I congratulate all of us, the school, all of our loved ones both here and those watching out there for supporting us to this first but not the last finish line, my friends, not the last, because our journey continues. I thank you for listening, and congratulations, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Omara, for your inspirational thoughts. So right now, the portion of the program is devoted to the presentation of student and faculty awards. We are proud of all of our students and their accomplishments. And today, we especially are proud to honor those students who have earned additional distinction in the eyes of their peers and professors. At this time, I will turn the program over to Associate Dean Dawn Schaefer, to, where she will present these awards and share brief remarks with you. Don't worry, I'm actually prepared for this part. <laughs> All right. So it is my tremendous pleasure to share with you this year's student award recipients. Please note that the descriptions of the awards and the student bios are in your program, um, so you can feel free to peruse that. While I will reiterate some of that information, I've also spoken with each of the awardees to find out what they'd really like for you to know, and so I'm excited to share some of that information with you as well. So the first two awards are given for exemplary performance during field practicum. The exemplary macro and clinical awards are decided upon by the faculty in the Office of Field Education based on nominations from students, field instructors, and faculty members. These students have been exceptional leaders, have motivated and inspired others, are strong advocates, show commitment to social change, and have made a significant contribution to our social work community. So our first recipient is Kathleen Plant, who is receiving the Macro Field Award. <laughs> Kathleen was nominated by her field instructor who stated that in my 20 plus years in child welfare, I have never experienced a student intern so invested and involved in so many different projects across the continuum of child welfare. Her field instructor went on to highlight some of the projects on which Katie took leadership I'll tell you, the list was real long, so I'm not gonna read all of it right now. Um, and it's clear that she really took her work seriously and sought to contribute in as many ways as she could during her internship. She leaves behind an impressive legacy of work. What Kathleen really wanted to communicate was her passion for working with children and families. She wants to center the stories of the families that she serves to ensure that our systems are truly working for them. 
Her work at Promise Heights and the Department of Social Services provided a unique, unique mix of clinical and macro experiences that have positioned her well to be a change maker. And she's excited to see where this path takes her. Our next recipient is Melanie Yates, who is, re <laughs> who is receiving both the Clinical Field Award chosen by the Office of Field Education and the Exemplary Clinical Award chosen by her peers. In reading through her nominations, of which there were many, I was struck by the consistency with which Melanie was described. She is described as committed, passionate, and fierce. Her field instructor shared that in his 25 years as a field instructor, he had never seen a student undergo as much personal and professional transformation during a field placement as Melanie. Fueled by a traumatic loss in her personal life, Melanie worked to create real and sustainable change at the policy level. She lobbied successfully to have House Bill 811 introduced to the legislature, which would require all hospitals to include fentanyl testing in their standard drug screening panels. Hmm. Such testing will allow for more rapid and accurate diagnosis and treatment of drug overdoses and allow better, health, better public health surveillance of the extent of the fentanyl crisis. Melanie led a robust lobbying campaign which ultimately led to the bill being signed into law just last month by the governor. The bill has been renamed the Josh Symes Act in honor of Melanie's late partner. Um, <laughs> After graduation, Melanie plans to continue working in the addiction field as a therapist and to continue pursuing policy work on the state and federal levels. Our next recipient is Lucy Zhao. <laughs> who is also being honored with two awards, the Exemplary Macro Student of the Year, which was chosen by her peers, and the Amy Cohen Callow Award, chosen by the macro faculty in honor of our beloved colleague, Dr. Amy Cohen Callow, who passed away in 2018. Amy was an organizational scholar with expertise in nonprofit volunteer management and epitomized organizational citizenship. Lucy came to UMB as a dual degree student, earning her master's, her MSW, and her MPH over the last three years. Prior to joining us, she served in both AmeriCorps and the Peace Corps. Lucy made strong contributions at her field placement, serving first in an adult learning center and then as an in-house organizer with the Center for Restorative Change and the Office of Sustainability. Lucy was a founding member of the Eco Social Work Group um, in action, which is dedicated to amplifying the value of eco-social work and fostering greater knowledge and awareness of the interconnections between climate change, health equity, and the social work profession. The group has been extremely active this year, which is no small feat. If I know Lucy, if, if any of you know Lucy as we do, her energy and enthusiasm is contagious. Um, and as a matter of fact, she got me to eat a cricket at EcoFest, so that was pretty amazing. After Ishita returns from her year-long trip around the world, Lucy plans to pursue a career in environmental justice and climate resilience, where she hopes to apply her degrees to address systemic inequities affecting climate vulnerable populations in a global context. Congratulations. I am now pleased to introduce our next awardee, Shifa Ahmed. Uh, Shifa is the recipient of the Julie Kreider Co. Award. This award is given on behalf of the macro faculty to pay tribute to a beloved colleague, Julie Kreider Co., who passed away in 2003. Julie was a true advocate for equality and justice. 
Schiffa divided her field education experience between Senator Mary, Mary Washington's office and the Maryland Health Care for All Coalition. During her time in Senator Washington's office, her primary responsibility was to provide support to constituents, the major majority of whom were experiencing challenges with accessing services. Her supervisor was moved by her patience and presence with each client. During her time in Senator Washington's office, she raised awareness of food insecurity on college campuses, and her advocacy informed the House bill, or Senate bill rather, of 353, also known as the Hunger Free Campus Program. Schiffa was able to bridge the gap between community needs and legislation. When I asked what else Schiffa would like known about her journey, she shared the importance of the Ahmadi Muslim Students Association for Women at UMBC, of which she stated, those girls really mean a lot to me and they really helped me grow. She also said, if she could mention my parents, that would be wonderful. So a big shout out to Shifa's parents, <laughs> Mohammed and Rafa and Nasir. <laughs> Our next awardee is Jasmine Seymour. Jasmine is receiving the Title IV-E Education for Public Child Welfare Program Outstanding Student of the Year Award. Whew, that's long. Presented to a student who has demonstrated an outstanding level of proficiency, initiative, and commitment to the higher standards of social work practice in a public child welfare field placement. Jasmine was nominated by her field instructor who cited her flexibility, ability to handle challenges with maturity and dedication to the profession. Originally assigned to the in-home services unit at Anne Arundel County Department of Social Services, Jasmine was doing exemplary work. She was then abruptly reassigned to a child advocacy center with little notice and had to acquire a completely new skill set. While this could have been unnerving, Jasmine handled the change with grace. She provided excellent service provision to clients from an anti-racist and anti-oppressive perspective. She has embraced the mission of public child welfare to protect children and enhance family functioning. After graduation, she plans to seek employment at Prince George's County Department of Social Services, where she will continue to partner and advocate with families. When asked what else she'd like for you to know, she stated, I really want people to know I'm 21 years old. <laughs> 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 So Jasmine took college classes in high school. She was able to get her bachelor's degree in two years. So look out, world. Yeah. Our next recipient is Jennifer Yoshikawa, who is being honored with the G Gear Award. The Geriatrics and Gerontology Education and Research Program is an interprofessional program for the purpose of enhancing health professional training in the field of geriatrics and gerontology. Jennifer entered the MSW program with a small, small, whew, that's wrong, strong commitment <laughs> to social and economic justice, particularly for older adults living in Baltimore. Her application for the Advanced Standing Program was so impressive that Senior Associate Dean, who's here to press the to present the award, um, remembered her essays three years after she had read them. Her skills in geriatric social work have only increased during her time in the program. Through her coursework and her placement at Gilcrest Multicare Center and Keswick, she has been able to develop her, her practice. Jennifer also supports the learning of other students, helping her classmates connect learning material to their personal and professional experiences, and approaching everything with a justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion lens. When asked what else she'd like to share, she simply stated, I would like to thank my parents, Ed and Teresa, who have always been there to support me and celebrate my successes alongside of me. So well done, Ed and Teresa. <laughs> you. Last but not least, Tracy Heckel. <laughs> Tracy is receiving the USG Award. So the University's at Shady Grove Award is given to a student who exemplifies scholarship excellence, service to the campus and broader community, and has demonstrated leadership in campus graduate student issues and involvement on campus organizations, issues, and activities. 
Tracy received the Healthcare Initiative Foundation Scholarship as both an undergraduate and graduate student. She serves as an officer in the Eco Social Work Group and also volunteers for the Montgomery County Pride Prom. <laughs> Being a social worker for ProMedica Potomac has intensified her passion for helping patients navigate acute medical diagnoses and quality of life challenges. Her field placement with Montgomery Hospice gave her the privilege of being allowed into families' lives um, as they approach the end of life. Tracy wants to spend her career challenging the stigmas that surround death and dying. By virtue of her lived experience, including being a cancer survivor, <laughs> and her exemplary academic achievements, Tracy demonstrated her passion and belief that access to care for those navigating medical and mental health challenges is a human right. There are a couple of extra things that she wanted me to let you know. So when Tracy graduated high school in 1986, she had a 1.75 GPA and she wasn't accepted into college at that time. At 49, she decided to get her associate's degree and went back to school. And now, she's on this stage, winning an award for her academic and community accomplishments. We still got a couple more. <laughs> Tracy is a proud first generation student. She is grateful to have had so many people in her corner who have contributed to her success. Now she wants to pay it forward by being the biggest cheerleader and hype woman possible for her patients and peers. the distinct pleasure of giving out our staff and faculty awards. So the first award is the Staff Exemplary Award, and this award goes to Mr. Chris Beagle. Chris is going to be receiving this award from Dr. Wendy Shire, who's the Executive Director of the Center for Restorative Change. So Christopher S. Beagle, MSW, LCSWC, is a director of clinical services at the Center for Restorative Change, directing, directly leading and overseeing community-based in-home services with children and families at Family Connections Baltimore. He is an alum of our program, as well as an alum from our Title IV-E Education for Public Child Welfare program, graduating in 2010 with his MSW. Mr. Beagle provides clinical supervision to social workers in multiple settings, including community-based, family-centered services and school systems. As a field instructor, he facilitates trainings, seminars, group supervision, and individual supervision for graduate-level social work interns, incorporating both macro and micro-level frameworks into their practices. Chris is also a trainer and curriculum developer for the SHARP framework, implementing an anti-racist and anti-oppressive framework in human services. Mr. Beagle remains committed to evolving human service systems approaches to address the safety and well-being of children and families and providing trauma-informed services with an anti-racist and racial equity framework. It is my distinct pleasure to award this exemplary staff award to Mr. Chris Beagle. These, the next two awards are going to the same faculty member, Dr. Jody Fry. So, so the first award is uh, the Donna Harrington Exemplary Factory Men Faculty Mentor Award. This award honors Donna's legacy as an outstanding mentor to PhD students and recognizes a faculty member each year who follows in her footsteps by providing exceptional support and guidance to a PhD student. 
In this year, of this, the inaugural year of this award, we recognize Professor Jody Fry, who receives this award from our PhD alumna, Dr. Patrice Forrester, class of 2022. <laughs> Dr. Donna Harrington worked for over 20 years at our School of Social Work, mentoring MSW and PhD students. In the last 10 years of her work, she directed and managed the doctoral program. Donna passed away in 2017, leaving a lasting impression on so many students, including the winner of this award, Dr. Jody Fry. Jody is a professor and associate dean for research at our School of Social Work. Her research focuses on adult behavioral health and well-being with an emphasis on suicide prevention, mental health, substance use, and the workplace. She has published over 100 articles, books, and book chapters, and presents her research regularly at international conferences. As a double graduate of University of Maryland, Baltimore, her MSW and PhD, she was mentored by Dr. Donna Harrington. Since joining the faculty in 2006, Dr. Frey has, Fry has worked every year with one or more doctoral students, and she often reflects on her mentorship from Dr. Harrington as she strives to provide the same level of professional and personal support to all the PhD students. Dr. Fry received an incredible seven nominations for this award from the PhD students, and here are a few comments from the students and alumni who nominated her. Quote, Dr. Fry is a stellar instructor and mentor. She is warm, kind, and creates opportunities for students to conduct rigorous research and empowers us to be a part of the decision-making process. She also cares about students as a whole person living nuanced lives. Not only am I a better researcher because of my mentorship from Dr. Fry, but I am also a better human. I can think of few who give their time so generously. And this next quote, I, I look to Jody as an exemplar of a public scholar engaging in research projects and education around the U.S. Her Be Well lab and work in Michigan focusing on men's mental health has shown me ways that as a scholar we can affect change and contribute to discourse broadly at local, state, and national levels. It is my distinct pleasure to award this Donna Harrington Exemplary Faculty Mentor Award to Dr. Jody Fry. Okay, Jody, don't go far. So Dr. Fry is also receiving the Exemplary Faculty Award, an award given to a faculty member who's chosen by students. Having been a student herself in both her MSW and PhD programs, Dr. Fry never loses sight of the challenges students face while going through the program. Her passion and commitment to social work in the workplace and behavioral health is widely felt and appreciated by the hundreds of students Jody has taught and mentored over her 18 years on faculty. Her scholarship on workplace behavioral health is something that she brings into the classroom and all interactions with students as she advances their social work learning and careers and ensures that they care for their personal lives and growth at the same time. Congratulations, Dr. Fry and the amazing award winners. Let's give them all a round of applause. I'm now pleased to introduce Dr. Bethany Lee, who is the director of our PhD program, who will introduce and honor our PhD graduates. Right? Good afternoon. We actually have nine PhD graduates this year, so we're very proud of each of them. And we are fortunate that three of them have joined us today, so let me tell you a little bit about each of them. Dr. Lu Jae Peng first has defended his dissertation this spring and looked at social welfare attitudes of Americans using a variety of latent variable modeling approaches. Those are really fancy quantitative statistical techniques. During the program, he built significant expertise in this methodology, and no matter Dr. Peng's next steps, he will be actively engaged in advancing the rigor of analysis within the science of social work. Congratulations, Dr. Peng.
Next, we have Dr. Katherine Endy. Dr. Endy focused her research on improving parenting for young children, including evaluating interventions of parent-child intervention efforts. She drew from her own reservoir of self-compassion and emotional regulation as she navigated the PhD program while parenting her own three children. <laughs> Dr. Endy continues to coach parents of young children around parenting issues, and she recently became the Director of Assessment and Compliance at the Women's Institute of Torah and Seminary. Congratulations, Dr. Endy. And finally, Dr. Shauna Kiana Murray Brown. <laughs> Dr. Murray Brown may look familiar to you because just a few years ago she was a UMB MSW graduate sitting where many of you are today. In her MSW <laughs> research course, she discovered an aptitude and interest for research and came back after a few years to get her PhD. Her dissertation analyzed oral histories of black women advocates during the civil rights era to learn more about black healing, wellness, <laughs> and spirituality. She is a sought after author and speaker both nationally and here in her native Baltimore. We have been honored to be part of her academic journey. Congratulations, Dr. Murray Brown. Now to what we've all been waiting for, the hooding of our graduates. I'm honored to introduce to you those who will be helping with this hooding process, including Don Schaefer, Associate Dean of Student Affairs, and Alex Cosentina Tisch, ACA Support Services Specialist. Dr. Tamara Hicks will hood our graduates with a macro specialization. Dr. Samantha Fold and Dr. Ed Edward Pechaconis will hood our clinical graduates and Senior Associate Dean Amanda Lenning will congratulate graduates along with me. Jermaine Toriano Towns. <laughs> Steven Isaacson. Rodney Lamar Horton Jr. Brianna Fermansky. Khadija Chemis. Denny Simon. Lauren Bumgarner. Maggie Lewis. Jennifer Cruz. Jennifer Escobar Guevara. Maria Mora.
Diana Edwards. Jessica Leibowitz. Joshua Wenzinger. Shannon Cheek. Karfa Madison. Kara Madison. Anaya Gaither. Brianna Smith. Rebecca Schreier. Gavin Wolford. Shifa Ahmed. Lucy Zhao. Melanie Yates. <laughs> Kathleen Plant. <laughs> Charisma Alana Williams. <laughs> Reniqua Edwards. <laughs> Michelle Emma Penka. <laughs> Owen Artero. Latia Ray Glasgow. Kelsey Elizabeth Logan. Dawn Marie Baskin. Maata Wilson. <laughs> Sheena Oji. <laughs> Ima April Imani Davis. We will now begin with the clinical hooding. Allison Renee Clayton.
Diana Johansson. Kaylin Kregel. Ali Mackenzie Johnston. DeMarco Rojas. Leslie Hernandez. Misty Davis. Care Fox. Megan Louis Hargest. Joe Feldman. Emily Moore. Perry Holler. Sarah Rose Lummoth. Simone Boggs. Venus Jones. Sunny Salmonte. Elizabeth Crossley. Derek. Thomas Staines. Taylor Jean Roscoe. Tahisha Robinson. Lily Staring. Morgan Freighter. Petrina Franklin. Rebecca Watkins. <laughs> Omira Kazi. Sarah D. Fiori. Tracy Heckel. Jennifer Yoshikawa. Jasmine Seymour. Hillary 
Quell. Emily Elizabeth Zara. Ashby Gibson Waters. Amanda Nicole Sipes. Sarah Poole. Ibrahim Mohammed Cisse. Peace Oduje Unufe. Christopher Carlene Check. Kai Zira Pearson. Katie Joe Genero. Aminata Coroma. Jada Kelly. Costas Milo Canellos. Micah Hinga. Micah. Daniel Scott Jones. Yaakov Levine. Danielle Forey. Elijah Taylor Black. Danielle Barnard. Raven Hammond. Jessica Beatrice Ariel Bone. Kristen Adele Abrams. Jessica Heather Dickerson. Alana Ambala. Julia Blair Wynick. Madeline Mazenko. Martha Morgenstein. Madison Landreth. Kimberly Buckley. (laughs) 
Edgar Joel Fields. Elizabeth Green. Angie Y. Roberts. Phoebe Rice. Anaya Simone Williams. Jasmine Drummond. Tannery Atik. Nature Josette Duran Smith. Mona Rajai. <laughs> Todd Michael Pazinska. <laughs> Mary Frances Ekua Gums. Zoe Kane. <laughs> Alexandra Kelly. <laughs> Kelvin A. Hawkins. Dochi Elendu Aisite <laughs> Kwame <laughs> Jalisa Monet Fies. Alexandra Miracle Brown. Rodney Vincent Coates Jr. Nicholas Nemphos. Pilar Flores Ramirez. Maya Montenegro. Shanice Carter. Siandane Underwood. <laughs> Stacy Anitra Greaves. <laughs> hey. 
Sean Augustus Sr. Sabrina Figuera Velasco. Nafi Jaytay. Umbaru Sise. Taisha Edoye. <laughs> Catherine L. Jakuda. Christopher Darpa. Mia L. Rhodes. Yolanda Lisa Lewis. Momo Margarita Pennington. Cole Davis. Emma Ernest. Emily Amudi. Harry Garrity. Dana Lovett Siegel. Chloe Marie Philippin. Cynthia Lorena Gamara. <laughs> Lindsay Allardyce. Paul Berman. Jada Clark. Kendra Jasmine Butler. Christian Helland. Madeline Margaret Dahl. Darren David Felder. Sierra Michelle Brown.
Marcus Austin Fulton. Nicole Lynn Burke. Bryn Herrick. Brooke Bainham. John Gilligan. Mary Beth Moreski. Laura Marie Reitz. Anna Christine Duke. Gina Marina Maria Bono. Melissa Michelle Link. Sintera Caldwell. Annalyn Leonardo. Shelby Hettenbach. Candace Ricks. <laughs> Melissa Gillardi. Janaea Latrice Brown. <laughs> Michaela Grace Domathodi. <laughs> Catherine Violet Moore. Elise Gerard Dalzo. Blair Brown. Melissa Fishman Cordish. Josephine Jesse Bai. Teco Edwige Lea da Silveira. <laughs> Tiffany Katrina Alharism. Daniel Baylor. <laughs> Bailey Jill Hutchinson. Okay. 
Keteria Ikeda Michelle Crowder. Daria Hawkins. Kishara Meadows. LaMonica Richardson. Monique Jean Phillips. Jasmine Nicole Rivera. Amy Marie Dowby. Joshua Max Friedman. Jenny Lee. Asia Nanzette Adams. Ashley Jones Odiami. Sierra P. Golson. Lisa Marie Gresham. Jacqueline Bird. Hannah Lamptey. <laughs> Ashley Sorto. <laughs> Yaclyn Romero Romero. Janessa Lee Reyes. <laughs> Kenise Brooks. <laughs> Kaya Brightson. Tamika Carter. <laughs> Catherine Helen Serco. <laughs> Sean Rill. Maya Elizabeth Kepke. Mary Nash Wilson. Natalie Elaine Moran.
Andrew Vernon. Leora Miriam Rosenberg. Jacqueline Smith. Ruth Berlia Kachima. Catherine Perez. <laughs> Helen Na Amorcor Richmond. <laughs> Candace Anthony. Mika Saturn. Alexandra Claire Smith. Lauren Rebecca Brown. Tiffany Miles. Maddie McDowell. Nicole Lauer. Jeremiah Freeman Savage. <laughs> Catherine Quimby McBride. <laughs> Taylor Ann Polito Wright. Carrie Amelia Cheston. <laughs> Allie Peterson. <laughs> Julia Parada. Cynthia Rivera. Elizabeth Rockerbrand. Leah Singman. Shannon Golub. <laughs> Margaret Lindsay Cousin. <laughs> Amber Christine Crobot. Catherine Hauser. J. 
Chenying Zhao. Bhavna Prasad. Christiane Davis. Cecile Coleman. Faith C. James. Elizabeth Ann McGilvery. Proma Chodri. Daria Stein. Alexander Philip Skarkinski. <laughs> Zenant Iman Sofiola. Colleen McCormick. Delaney Elizabeth Schenker. Monica K. Mills. Madison Dor Jackson. Madeline Nuea. Brian Ruth. Alexandra Ohora. Jessica Lynn Chapel. Sarah Westcott Adams. Graham Thistlewaite. Elise Carricker. <laughs> Jamie Elizabeth Rosen. <laughs> Brianna Catherine Meeks. Anel Yapalucci. <laughs> Dariel Serrato. <laughs> Rachel Boxman.
Tracy Barr. Kimberly Yvonne Hernandez. Shelby Ting. Faiza Fatnajad. Julia Williams. Calcadon Yilma. Hannah Caitlin Teason. Marissa Ann Post. Alisa Gutierrez. Kevin Travis Smith. Marjorie Estelle Tribble. Amin Jung. Par Tiang. Lindsay Blair Greer. Juliana Borelli. Rachel Schwartz. Jennifer Williams. McKenna Price. Caroline McCloskey. Camille Alexandra Turpin. Monica Ormengold. Ingrid Rosemary Rivas. Jennifer Viagran. Theodora Stajanovic. Farzana Khan. Libby Nuss.
Shauna Marie Griffin. Jonathan Holtzman. Lauren Truman. Yes. Melissa Ariana Melendez. Yes. Elizabeth Kate Tarnoski. Elizabeth Pruce. <laughs> Kinley Ashton Millet. <laughs> Kirsten Mall. Elizabeth Arlene Medina. Carlos Alfaro Rodriguez. Tierra Monique Cole. Jessica Lynn Richardson. <laughs> Elena Shetterly. <laughs> Louveth Andrea Portillo Carbajal. David Hernandez. Mackenzie Lucius. Christina Luis Keeney. Ariane Brown. <laughs> Caroline Sheena Adkins. <laughs> Janice Apple Ama Enning Jen. Michela Delore Hawkins. <laughs> Samaya Wooten. <laughs> Imani Van Dyke. Chantel Raquel Bennett. <laughs> Tia Slotnikov. <laughs> Megan Young.
Liesel Blumenthal. Marie De Matos Maderos. Congratulations to all of those who have graduated to this afternoon. I want to thank you all for making this um, occasion memorable and dignified. Please remain seated until all the graduates have processed from the hall and then to the lobby and outside area to offer your congratulations. On behalf of the faculty, staff, alumni association, and administration, I wish all of you great joy and success. Please continue to be generous with your time and talent. Remember, you will always be a part of this School of Social Work here at the University of Maryland and part of our family. We cannot be a great school without you. And now, under the authority duly vested in me by the regents of the University of Maryland, I proclaim that we recess.